yeah so we start like i discussed problem solving and troubleshooting like we discussed before you do anything for the patient or the ventilator alarms you need to first protect your patient so you ensure the first oxygenation you visually access the patient and you auscultate his chest assess the monitors and after doing all that first to disconnect the patient from the ventilator and manually ventilate him so how do you manually ventilate him either with the bain circuit or with the ambu bag and once the patient is okay and safe then we can go back to the ventilator and review the alarms and when you are looking at the patient and trying to understand the issues ask yes or no questions for all these things which you saw earlier is his chest moving yes no you know is the monitor connected properly yes no is there some issue which you can obviously see from your eyes yes no and observe physical signs of respiratory distress so what are the physical signs of respiratory distress patient will be trying to suck in breath he is knocking on the tube or he can actually see his neck veins full he is using accessory muscles of ventilation and after looking at the patient go to the ventilator and then you evaluate the ventilator setting in the graphic box so whenever you go and evaluate any issue of the ventilator and the you have to go from the patient to the ventilator first patient issues then tubing issues and then ventilator issues this is the sequence in which you go and all this is done after making sure your patient is safe first okay so you back mask him or you take him on the bains and then you try to evaluate your patient Yeah, so then we have other uh, problems. Ventilator alarms can be because of many reasons. Few are patient-related problems. So, what are the related problems which you can think of? You can have airway problem. What is the meaning of airway problem? Either the airways you having some kind of spasm, or there is a small blockage in the tube, or the airway which you have inserted has got displaced. It has come out. Or um, it is gone in the esophagus, or it is abutting against the carina. It goes on one side, so that's the airway problem. Second problem, problem is of the lung, the pneumothorax. Also, you can have secretions, bronchospasm, and change in body position. Many times, you just change the patient's body position, and the airway, uh, the ventilator alarms go off because in each body position, the compliance of the lung or the ventilated part of the lung. is different and sometimes even drug induced distress can be there in the ventilator and you have other causes of patient alarms like pulmonary embolism we'll discuss all these problems later ventilator related problems there can be leaks in the tubings or in the ventilator circuit or there is a problem in the oxygen supply or the oxygenation or you not put your support settings correctly or you not put a proper trigger sensitivity patient is getting an auto peep or now patient is having a increased ventilatory drive when your ventilator is not matching with the patient's drive yeah uh, uh, then you can have leaks like i said now these are few graphs which in which you can make out where the issue is in the ventilator we'll be discussing all these uh, issues later now what do we call by ventilator dyssynchrony that means the ventilator is moving at, at its own pace the patient is moving at the own pace and both ventilator and patient are not married to each other that means whatever the patient requirement is or his ventilator effort is the ventilator is not cooperating together and they are not working as one unit so there can be the problems in this there can be a problem in the trigger uh, setting which you have put the flow maybe the mode is not correct for the patient your patient is totally awake and he is fighting the ventilator and you put him in a control mode or the peep is too high or too low or um, you have a closed loop ventilation 